Okay, and welcome to another video uh, looking at synoptic economics, revision for A-level economics. In particular, we're going to focus on the strategies you can use to get great marks on questions that ask you to evaluate and analyze, of course, the micro and macro consequences of something in particular. In this case, we're going to take a look at some of the micro and macro effects of the post-Brexit, post-referendum world, the UK leaving the EU single market. Popsicle is our favoured mnemonic for just thinking about some of the micro aspects you might want to consider. Impact of a, of a decision on price, and output on profits, on the structure of a market, on inefficiency and competition, on the labour market, on externalities. All kinds of micro things you could consider. You don't have to use all of them, of course. You'll be focused on things you think are most relevant to your answer. And on the macro side, you could think about macro implications such as development, inflation, growth, GDP growth, jobs, employment, the structure of the economy, the pattern of employment and jobs. Trade, of course, is important. Inequality, significant. And the government's fiscal balance. Now, there are many things you can consider. Well, obviously, this is a, in this video, I'm taking my selection of things you might want to put into an answer. The EU single market, of course, is a, is a deeper economic cooperation between member states. The EU is also a single, it's a customs union. It also has a single market built on four freedoms, free trade in goods, free trade in services, free mobility of labour and the free movement of capital. Now we know that the Conservative government has decided it's going to leave the single market, but the final Brexit decision of course is shrouded in uncertainty ahead of the, the final decisions by the spring of 2019. There are many different aspects of Brexit you can consider, some micro, some macro, from trade, and jobs, to the labour market, to rules and regulations, to the environment, carbon trading, for example, people's living standards. There's all kinds of many, many issues you can bring into your answer. So I'm going to take you through a suggested answer, but keep in mind that's, that's all it is, it's not a model answer, but I'm just looking at how you structure your answer in the exam. Bit of context, never does anybody harm, does it? So as we leave the EU, a big debate about what kind of tariffs we're likely to face. Well, the European Union, of course, has been cutting tariffs over the years, including the UK, a member. The average EU import tariff is just less than 5%. That ranges from 0% on pharmaceutical products, 11% uh, on footwear, to nearly 50% nearly tariffs on tobacco. Keep in mind, of course, the EU has a common external tariff. So the tariff that is set by Ireland, Slovakia, Sweden, Portugal, etc. is always the same. It's common to all member states. So let's think about how we structure our answer. The key thing is we're trying to build points, then develop some analysis, and then evaluate points. All the time, think about micro, macro, micro, macro. Let's take you through three micro points, see which ones you, you might want to use. So point one would be that the European Union is a customs union, and leaving it may lead to higher import tariffs on EU exports coming into the UK. So European products would presumably have a tariff applied to them, uh, and that would, of course, increase costs for UK firms. If you're importing coal from Poland, for example, or importing you know, consumer electronic products from Germany or cars from Slovenia, there might well be a tariff on those products. That would lead to higher costs for, cons uh, for, for firms who might experience lower profits, could indeed raise their prices. And you could make a micro case for saying that consumer welfare would therefore suffer. However... Evaluation point is always in green here. This assumes that the UK is unable to negotiate a wide-ranging trade deal with the EU. So the hope is that Britain will be able, over the next few years, perhaps with a transition in place, to negotiate a, a good free trade deal with the European Union, which might limit the, the impact of, of tariffs. In each case here, we're making a point, and we'll make it clearly and make it succinctly. Just build a little bit of analysis. We could put in a supporting diagram for example, a tariff diagram, but then evaluate the point you've just made. Here's point two. Some UK firms and industries might suffer from a decline in net inward migration from the European Union. Again, this is a microeconomic point focusing on particular firms and industries in sectors such as hospitality, technology, and construction in particular. EU workers have helped overcome skill shortages. You could develop the analysis to talk about the impact on wage inflation importance of getting seasonal workers in, for example, in the summer in the farming sector. 
build your contextual analysis. But then evaluate, look to evaluate as you go. Fall in the EU payments, UK payments to the EU, we pay uh, around eight to 10 billion pounds a year to the European Union. So a fall in UK payments to the EU could fund, release funds to increase investment in better technical training for UK workers. So about 0.5% of our GDP goes in uh, contributions to the EU. Might that money, some of it find its way into better vocational technical training um, to help replace the reduction in migrant workers. Third point, again, microeconomics, leaving the EU might cause delays at borders as UK firms have to comply with EU rules and regulations. This will be a non-tariff barrier to trade, an NTB. Build the analysis a little bit further. Many products cross borders several times. Think about engine parts used in motor industries. Think about very technical products used in high-tech industries where you might well have products from several different countries. So many products cross borders several times. Just-in-time delivery, which many UK firms use, requires minimal border delays. So there's a prospect here for another increase in costs for firms, some of whom may decide it's not worth the hassle. However, evaluation point, however, most UK exporters already comply with EU regulations, you know, been inside the single market for 40 years. And indeed, post-Brexit, businesses will have less red tape to deal with. So, for example, the pharmaceutical industry might actually be able to, to bring products, new medicines, new treatments to market a little quicker, rather than having to go through the EU regulatory process. Now, do you see what we're doing here? For each of these points, we're making a point in grey, building a little bit of analysis in orange, but then crucially evaluating our argument as we go. Evaluating the point, point in evaluation. Let's turn to some macro effects. So consequences on the macro side if we leave the single market. My first point is that leaving the EU will allow the UK to make many free trade agreements with other nations. So I'm making the case here that the UK could actually be better off in terms of trade. because It opens the opportunity, opens the door to make some free trade deals. Free trade agreements with fast-growing emerging countries, China, India, for example, might then see a surge in UK exports, which will add to GDP growth. So I'm making a connection with the macro side of the effects. What do we now do? We evaluate. However, complex trade agreements take time. They certainly do. Indeed, the recent European Union-Canada free trade deal took seven years to fully agree. Complex negotiations. So the idea that suddenly we're going to enter this brave new world of free trade deals perhaps is a little optimistic. My second macro point is that leaving the single market will allow the UK economy to limit net inward migration from the EU. This will provide opportunities for UK people, perhaps younger people, to find work. And if there's less upward pressure on population, strong net inward migration this could also lead to a slow growth of house prices and rents you could build an argument about why housing affordability is a, a factor limiting for example geographical mobility of labor and inequality of course as people can't afford to, to buy or indeed many many people can't afford to rent but then we evaluate however but uh, the uk suffers from long run skill shortages so although net immigration inward migration is likely to fall Parts of the economy, and the NHS in particular, are hugely reliant on migration. So there could be a, a diminution, actually, in terms of our aggregate supply capacity, unless we can find the labour force and the human capital to replace it. I'm going to build a third point here. Leaving the single market will diminish UK trade with the EU and actually cut inward investment. So here's a kind of negative macro point. 44% of our exports go to the EU. So over 200 billion pounds a year out of a total of 500 billion and higher tariffs would make UK exports more expensive. And then you could put a tariff diagram in to show the effect on British producers, perhaps. However, this depends on, nice evaluative phrase, this depends on the trade deal we make with the EU. It all depends on the trade deal. And crucially, will live in the single market lead to a fall in investment? Well, possibly. But actually, inward investment, inward FDI, depends on many factors. It's not just the level of tariffs and things. Business taxes will come into it, the strength of regulation, the quality of the labour force, political stability. Uh, many factors influence FDI, not just your position inside or outside the single market. So what we're doing here is we're building micro consequences, 
for building macro consequences. Your teacher will have a strong advice for you about how many points you need to build, analyze and evaluate for an essay. Um, little analysis diagram could help. Somewhere along the way, you're gonna probably put in a bit of analysis diagram just to support the, the answer. This diagram is the classic diagram showing a tariff on steel, for example. You might wanna tweak the diagram, but generally you're showing a tariff effect and the possible consequence for trade volume of imports and of course crucially if you want to get into the micro side you could you should you could show the impact on consumer welfare things like consumer producer surplus good good idea to finish with a final reason comment i've actually had quite a few here but uh, so bear with me so if i was if i was trying to bring this essay to a conclusion i would say that most mainstream economists believe the uk will be better off inside the single market even if uh, we leave the european union we'd actually most economists are like we should try and negotiate participation in the single market because economists believe in free trade and particular mutual gains and welfare from from being in close proximity to our biggest trade partner so getting the best trade deal with the eu is hugely important if we leave the single market we need to get the best deal there's many different ways of leaving the european union on the other hand uh, the profits of doom have been silenced a little bit the uk economy's been doing well since the brexit vote Unemployment's very low now, 4.6% of the labour force. However, inflation is now 2.7%, in part because of the big fall in the pound. Actually, most of the pessimists, most of the pessimistic forecasts about leaving the single market actually are not too focused on the first year or the second year. They think about the longer term effects of being outside the single market. Many businesses, I know quite a few myself, will have to adjust their supply chains. Uh, and some will actually choose to, to put their money into mainland Europe and move out, out of the UK. Other businesses won't do that. They'll successfully pivot and shift their exports and their production to fast-growing countries, China, India, fast-growing countries in sub-Saharan Africa, for example. Overall, I would argue that the consequences of Brexit for the UK, both in the short term, the medium term and the, the longer term, are highly uncertain. So much depends, of course, about the sort of deal that we end up with in a year or two's time. But what I've tried to do here is show you some of the micro and macro effects. And the, the, the essay question itself, of course, and, and the edXR paper three is asking you to think about micro macro consequences. So making a nice clear distinction and signposting to the examiner and evaluating as you go, I think is a, is, is a good strategy. Well, I hope you found this useful. Check out some more videos on YouTube, but for now I'll sign off. Thank you.